Choosing an enclosure for your reptile can be stressful. There's so many different types, there's so many different brands that it can make your decision a really difficult one. Well, in this video, I'm gonna to try to help you out with that decision by counting down what I think are the top five best enclosures for reptile keepers. My name is Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. I am here with Anzu, the pretty bird. Say hi, Anzu. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> so today's video is all about enclosures, and we are going to be counting down what I believe are the top five enclosures that a reptile keeper can possibly buy. So I just want to put a disclaimer out there that certain reptile species need certain requirements. So this is kind of just a general overview of the types of enclosures that work best for reptiles, but there are gonna be certain uh, species of reptiles that might need a specific requirement that requires you to have a specific enclosure. So let's jump right in with number five, glass enclosures. And I wanna specifically talk about front opening glass enclosures because there is a difference. So you have the aquarium kind of glass enclosures that are pretty much made for fish and then you have like the reptile glass enclosures that are front opening like exoterras. So let's start off with the pros about glass enclosures. So one of the pros for glass enclosures is that they're readily available everywhere. They're all over Petco, PetSmart, every reptile shop you'll see a glass enclosure. They are not expensive cages. You could go on Facebook Marketplace or, or offer up and you could find one for $50 on there. You know, a 20 gallon for $50, $100. There's some Exoterras on there that will probably be, you know, a little bit more expensive than your average like aquarium tank, but Exoterras still, I mean, you're talking $150, maybe $200, maybe. For those of you who have watched my channel before, you guys know that I am not the biggest fan of glass enclosures. And so I know what you guys are thinking, well, you have you know glass enclosures behind you. I do, and I get that. But like I said in one of my earlier videos, I am trying to switch out all of my animals from glass enclosures into new enclosures that we will get into later in the video. So for the price and for the availability, glass enclosures are not bad enclosures to have, especially the front opening ones. But let's talk about some cons. So one of the first cons that comes to mind when I'm talking about glass enclosures is their weight. They are super heavy enclosures. It usually the big ones, like the six foot ones, it will take like about two people to carry it, to carry them around. Another con that comes to mind is that they don't hold heat and humidity very well. And this could be a challenge for a lot of species of reptiles because pretty almost all reptiles you want to try to capture that heat and hold as much heat inside of it as possible. And same with the tropical species, you want to hold that humidity in. And for those purposes, glass enclosures are not the greatest. It's possible, I've done it before with my blood python. My blood python was in a glass enclosure before. So it is possible, but it's just gonna take a little bit extra work. Another con is a lot of glass enclosures are the aquarium style and they are top opening. And top opening enclosures are not the best for your reptiles. A lot of reptiles get stressed out seeing you reach over and reach from above because in the wild, a lot of predators, they associate something coming from above to be something like a bird, which in most cases is going to be a predator. Another con with the, especially with the aquarium style enclosures is that you can't stack them. So when you open it up from the top, you won't be able to stack another cage on top of it like some of the other cages that are on this list. And that means that you're going to have to buy like a stand and that can take up a lot of room in your reptile room and really just waste a lot of space. So, <laughs> really? Really? So as far as this list goes, I really don't recommend glass enclosures 
that much for the price factor and the availability factor if it's like your first reptile i would say you know go for it but i would say if you're gonna go glass spend a little bit of the extra money and get something like an exoterra or a zilla cage that opens from the front that is made for reptiles coming in at number four on the list is melamine enclosures now starting off with the pros for melamine enclosures one of the pros for melamine enclosures is that Pretty much every single one I've seen are front opening. So any melamine enclosure you're gonna see is probably going to be a front opening enclosure and that's always a pro when it comes to reptiles. Another pro about melamine enclosures is that they aren't that expensive. So they're, they're a little bit more expensive than the glass enclosures, but they're not so much more expensive that if you bought a whole reptile room full of them, you're gonna go bankrupt. So another pro about melamine enclosures is that in most cases they are stackable because they are front opening cages. That really comes in handy. I cannot stress that enough to you guys. That really comes in handy um, in terms of you know making your room look organized and clean and being able to fit more reptiles in the room. Because I mean, who doesn't want more? They are pretty available. I mean, I've seen them in quite a few uh, reptile shops. Um, I've never seen one in like a Petco or a PetSmart, so that's why they're a little less available than like a glass enclosure. Like I said, glass enclosures are just the most available. The first con that I can think of of a melamine enclosure is that they are pretty heavy. These enclosures are made of melamine wood and that makes them pretty heavy. Now, not as heavy as glass, but they, 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 they are heavier than anything else that is going to be on this list. That's just something you want to think about because when you're moving cages around, especially if you are getting new animals or you're upgrading cages because your animal is getting too big for its enclosure, you want to think about that because you're going to have to be moving this giant cage that's heavy around. And sometimes it might be by yourself or you'll have to ask somebody to come over to help you every time. Another con about melamine enclosures is that you can't get them wet. So these enclosures are not made for tropical species. You can pretty much only keep desert species in these enclosures. Because it's made out of wood, if you spray it too often, it could get moldy and kind of just deteriorate after a while. Now you could use some preventative measures like spraying it down with mold spray and putting like a coating on it that will protect it from the, the water but you're going to have to reapply that like almost every year. And that's just a whole process that I personally don't wanna to have to deal with. So really these are really best for desert species of animals, things like bearded dragons and uromastics and things like that. So coming in at number three is a do-it-yourself enclosure. And that is pretty self-explanatory. It's the enclosure that you build yourself. So why are do-it-yourself enclosures good and why did I put them on this list? Well, the first reason why is because you can make it out of any material you want you get to choose. So whereas a glass enclosure, it, it's glass, it comes as glass. A melamine enclosure, it comes as melamine. You get to go to the store and pick out the material that you wanna use. Another pro to having a do-it-yourself enclosure is because you get to make it the dimensions you want. Most of the enclosures on this list have set dimensions that they are going to come as. Whereas a do-it-yourself enclosure, if you need it to be 10 feet long by two feet wide, you can make it that way. If you need it to be six feet tall by three feet wide, you can make it that way. On the inside, you could put shelves in it. You could, you could put a water feature in it. Another pro to do-it-yourself enclosures is that they tend to be a lot cheaper than a lot of the enclosures that you are going to find online. I've seen people on YouTube and others who have made enclosures for less than a hundred dollars and there are these extravagant crazy enclosures basically just going out and picking up scraps and and, and doing deals with people to get the materials and finding bargains and making their enclosure for a really 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 cheap price so with your pros there's always a con and so pretty much the only con that i can think of in this situation is that you're doing all the work yourself and it depending on the size of your enclosure can be a lot of work but if you're not a handyman like me because i'm really not a handyman <laughs> if you're not a handyman then it could be difficult and it could be a complete disaster you might buy spend money on a bunch of supplies and try to build this enclosure and it might not be the sturdiest or you might your measurements might be off and it could just be all bad honestly if it wasn't for the fact that i don't think you know majority of people that are going to be watching this i don't think are like carpenters or you know people who know how to really like 
use tools and build things that well. If it wasn't for that, I would probably put this at number one because you could customize it however you want. But because of that reason, I just think that it's it's more realistic for a lot of people to, to kind of buy their smaller enclosures than it is for them to just build every single enclosure that they have. So coming in at number two on the list, is one of my favorites and that is PVC enclosures. PVC enclosures have a lot of pros and we can just get started with number one, they hold heat and humidity really well. Another pro is that they are reasonably priced. Depending on where you get them from, I got my enclosure, my PVC enclosure from Animal Plastics. I recommend them to pretty much everybody. And my other one is from a company called Boafile, I believe. I got it from somebody else, but they said it was from Boafile. They're gonna be a little bit more expensive than your glass enclosures and your melamine enclosures, and in some cases, your do-it-yourself enclosures, but they are definitely worth it. Another pro, and this is probably the biggest one for me, is that they are super light. You could move a six foot PVC cage by yourself, no problem. So another pro for PVC enclosures is that they are front opening and stackable. I've seen people with stacks of them from floor to ceiling just stacked up. They look amazing, they look sharp and they're super easy to clean. A lot of them from, I know from Animal Plastics, you can, you can get them customized to where you can have an area to put a heat lamp. If you, if you have an animal that doesn't use a heat pad, you can, you, you can get it to where it's customized like that. They can customize it for you with the lights already on the inside. Pretty much almost whatever you want, they have. And now for the cons of PVC enclosures, and I really only have two, and they aren't even really that big of a deal. Uh, the first one is that you are going to have to assemble it yourself in most cases. So in most cases, you are gonna at least have to have like a screwdriver or a drill or something like that because they will require you to assemble it when it gets there. So again, for people who aren't very handy, that could cause a little bit of a problem, but in all honesty, I put mine together and it's super simple. If I can do it, anyone can do it, trust me. The other con for PVC enclosures is that they can tend to be a little flimsy. That's not a really big deal. A lot of it could have to do with just the way it was assembled. Just something to look out for and just when you're assembling your PVC enclosure, make sure you're doing it right and make sure you're not cutting any corners because the last thing you want is for your enclosure to just completely fall apart. What are you doing? What are you doing? And last, but certainly not least, number one, you guys probably guessed it already because I talk about these cages all the time, vision cages. Vision cages are by far my favorite reptile cages to own. I love these cages. I think they are just the absolute best. I said when I first started this channel that I planned on moving all of my reptiles into either PVC cages or vision cages, and there are just so many reasons for that. Pretty much all the same reasons for PVC cages. They hold humidity really well. They hold heat really well. These cages are super lightweight, so just like the PVC cages, the six foot cage I can carry by myself with one hand, like that's how light they are. Um, even lighter than PVC cages. Obviously, they're front opening, they are stackable, they have the ventilation in the back so that you're able to stack them on top of each other. They look really, really, really sharp, especially the new ones that they came out with. They came out with like these charcoal gray or black ones that they came out with that look really, really, really sharp. I love them. And the reason why I put them above PVC cages is because they just don't have that flimsiness to them and they come already assembled. They come already molded. So you know, there's no screwing anything in. There's no, you know, having to put anything together. They are all, they just come the way they are. Even these cages though, they do come with a con or two. Uh, the, the first and main con is that they, they are pretty expensive. I found some great deals on Facebook Marketplace. That's where I get a lot of my stuff because they do have great deals there. Uh, I've gotten lucky a couple times with vision cages on Facebook Marketplace. You will find them there occasionally. So if you are on a budget, I would say go the PVC route. But if you have the money to spend, then I would say go for the vision cages. And then the other con is just that because they come ready-made, 
um, that's how you get it. There isn't really any customizing with these cages. So if you do want to like add lights to the inside or something, you're going to have to do it yourself and you're going to have to like drill the holes yourself and stuff like that. So that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys, I hope this made your decision a little bit easier. I will make sure that I put all the links to all these different kinds of cages in my description so go check that out if you guys are interested in checking out these cages make sure you leave a comment let me know if you like the video let me know if you dislike the video do you agree with the order i had these enclosures in make sure you like make sure you subscribe to the channel and please 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 share this video until next time everybody my name is pierce lavalley this is anzu we are in pierce's planet and remember it's all about the reps baby you just pooped on me Peace. damn poop she just pooped on me god again 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 and then you uh, just gonna keep the damn napkin with me oh my god dude seriously again oh my god this is why I can't do videos with you dude oh my god like, it's all the time. It's all the time, isn't it? Isn't it? I want you to go five minutes. Can you do that? Five minutes without pooping on me.